the matador of shadows by Katherine Owen with illustrations by Pat Degnino. Once upon a time, there was a land without shadows. Even on the brightest day, the trees cast no shadows on the mountains, the flowers cast no shadows on the meadows, and the people cast no shadows on the streets. They had lived without shadows for so long that when the shadows started to grow back, at first, they didn't even know what they were. A little boy thought that a tiny black puppy had begun to chase him, nipping at his ankles. And then the shadows grew longer. And a girl eating her breakfast thought she dropped a bowl of blackberries around her feet. Then the shadows grew longer, and a mother walking to work thought she was wearing a dress that was long and black and dragged down the road behind her. And the shadows grew longer, so the people of the town called a meeting and they decided to bring in the experts. The first expert was the shadow stomper. He wore boots as big as rain clouds and he ran behind people, jumping up and down on their shadows as they kept growing longer and longer. But all he did was make the shadows flatter. So they called in the next expert, the shadow washer. She wore gloves as shiny as moonbeams and whenever she saw a shadow, she scrubbed its dirty face but all that she did was to make the shadows wider. And the shadows kept on spreading and spreading over the town until it looked like a black river. So finally, the people decided to hire the most famous expert of all, the Matador of Shadows. Now Matadors usually fight bulls, but this Matador fought shadows instead. Matadors have capes and swords, even matadors of shadows. But this particular matador was old. When the people of the town came looking for him to solve their shadow problem, he told them that he was now retired and that besides, he had learned to love the shadows. Would the people try that? He asked them. Would they try to love these shadows that kept following them like puppies? and blackberries, and dresses, and rivers. But the people of the town said, No! We want our bright land back, the land that never used to know shadows. So the matador sighed, put on his cape, picked up his sword, and headed down to the town, followed by all the people. When they got there, he told them to, go to bed. And when they woke up the next morning, their problem would be solved and all the shadows would be gone. But the matador of shadows did not have to use his cape. No. And he did not have to use his sword. No. He knew now old as he was that he didn't have to kill the shadows to make them stay away from the land where everything was light. When morning came, the people rushed out of their houses to see if the shadows were still there. But the whole town was lit up again. Even the flowers sparkled. Meanwhile, the matador of shadows was back home, sitting beneath his favorite tree. All around him, the shadows grazed on the sunlight like gentle animals, and he could hear them snuffling and lowing with contentment, so happy they felt in their darkness. The end.